All right, welcome in for another weekly review. It's been a very busy week this week. Um, I, I want to start with the Fed talk because that really started the week, and that was the big news on Wednesday whenever they came out with not raising rates, and then also Jerome Powell came out and spoke, the chairman of the Fed. What happened with that, Quint? So Wednesday was fascinating. Uh, if you're a finance geek like we are, the look under the hood. So not surprising at all, Fed did nothing. They right. did not raise. They did not cut. That was expected. That Very was much so. yeah, mm, yeah. So and and when you say expected, you have to understand. You can look at the bond market. Bond market will place their money accordingly on what they anticipate the Fed to do. It would be like looking at the tote board at Keeneland and understanding who the favorite is. Right. So you're not guessing. You're not going, oh, the gray horse is going to be the favorite. You're looking at the money and determining. Now, the favorite doesn't always win. We right. know that. But more often than not, in the bond market, where the money goes is pretty much what the Fed's going to be doing. And so, the bond market basically said there was a 99% chance that they did not raise or cut rates at this meeting. They that's just correct. It yeah. Flat. So it was to be expected which is right but what we wanted to hear from powell at the press conference after was more information regarding what they talked about in december now what you may or may not remember is december the fed came out and surprisingly to almost everybody mm -hmm. they talked about three cuts three anticipated cuts of interest rates in 2024 and so that gave the market a new leg of life. It had already had a great year, but it gave it that fire into the end of the year. So if you're like, wow, this was awesome in the end of the year, it was because of that. So what I interpreted as is like the little kids in the house, you said to them, hey, we might go to Disney World. They we're going to the kids don't hear that. They hear we're going to Disney. Whoa, right. this is awesome. And so Jerome Powell did what Jerome Powell has to do, and he has to come out and say, now, wait a second, I said we might right. go to Disney World. You need to relax, right? And so what was interesting is there was two things that happened after that. The equity markets sold off on that news. Now, what you would anticipate is that if it sold off on the equity market, it did so because interest rates moved up, mm -hmm. right? Or conversely, let's say interest rates moved up, and the market sold down. That didn't happen. Right. Stocks sold off, but interest rates dropped considerably. Mm -hmm. That was a disconnect. That was not normal, okay? So, what happened the very next day? The very next day, stocks rebounded considerably. Right. The bond market was telling us, he can say what he wants, we're still going to Disney World. Like, yeah. oh, I get it, but we saw that you bought those tickets, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. So, that's what happened. It was fascinating. I, I was very fascinated watching that. The market is quickly shifting gears, though, and you can see this and you can feel this. It's starting to be baked in that inflation is coming down. Uh, you know, the economic data, we're going to talk about that in a second. Mm -hmm. Fascinating, but most parts coming in. So the fight against inflation is kind of taking a back seat. What's it taking a back seat to? Corporate earnings. So are the prices of stocks justifiable? Are these levels in the market justifiable? And that's what we quickly move to, uh, you know, later on in the week. Yeah, and I think that's what we saw last night. Amazon is the big one that we've been focusing on and reading into is what their numbers came out in their quarterly earnings. So what did that tell yeah, us? Yeah, this is great because obviously every quarter banks – technology, healthcare, all sectors have to report their earnings. Right. And they tell us a little bit about not only the previous quarter, but they foreshadow the future. Which can even be bigger sometimes, the foreshadowing. Always for the bigger. Yeah. It's uh, more often than not always bigger. Um, and in Amazon's case, both are big. Or Meta. Meta had an amazing report. Microsoft had a good report. Google was soft. Apple was not great, right? right? We've talked about that and, and why we've not been a fan of Apple. But Amazon's one of the most interesting. And I want to talk about that, highlighted that in the in the written piece. I talked about that on Schwab Network today. We'll include a link to that. Amazon beat the revenue number sales by $4 billion. <laughs> yeah. That's massive. They blew it out of the water. They yeah. blew it out of the water. They beat the earnings per share. They, they got a dollar versus approximately 81% which was, or 81 cents, which was to be expected. But here's what the CEO said on the call. He said that generative AI 
within their most profitable segment of the business, not what you buy online. That's not just Amazon. Right. What you buy online from Amazon, one click, or what you watch on Prime, it's not just Amazon. Amazon has a web service business, and they host and they help uh, most of the Fortune 500 companies. They're implementing AI to do that job better. And tucked into the transcript, the CEO, who's not a cheerleader, by the way, meaning he's not just all about hyperbole, he said that what they're seeing in generative AI can contribute potentially to tens of billions of dollars. Okay, stock's up on the news. It's one of the largest in the S&P, so naturally the S&P is up, the NASDAQ is up. Again, but what's fascinating, what I am amazed, Logan, is that you have to understand what's happening in the industry. AI is not just chat GPT. Right. It's making everything more efficient and therefore more profitable. Yeah. That's translating to bottom line earnings for these companies. It's like a tool. You were using a wrench, and now they're taking in a power drill that they're being no able question. to use, and that's better. And what it looks like from our vantage point is people are underestimating the power tool. Now, in history, we've done this. Right. Who is going to, you look back at the headlines at the turn of the century, no one in their right mind is going to drive 12 miles an hour in an automobile. That is absurd. We're going to stick with the horse and buggy. Now, we look back on that and we go, that was ridiculous, <laughs> right? I mean, my goodness. I remember when CNBC, I'll never forget this. Why would you send an email? Mm. Like, that is so impersonal. Just pick up the phone. This, this may not fly. Like, this is interesting. It may not fly. What? Mm. <laughs> like, don't call me. Send me an email, <laughs> exactly. right? Texting. I mean, so these advancements happen over time, and we go through the same prices. We don't believe them. We don't understand them. And then they start to become ingrained in our businesses or our daily lives, and we look back and we go, oh, that makes perfect sense. That's what's happening in this market. I'll dovetail. I know where you're going with your next question, but – we got news today, economic news today, that in most environments that we've been in in the last 18 months would have crushed the market. Absolutely. Would have destroyed it. Now, it's great economic news. Yeah, it's actually positive. Fascinating. Yeah. Non-farm payrolls came out, 335,000 jobs added in the last month, more uh, than anticipated by over almost, almost, almost 200,000. 200, yeah. And 175 was the 175,000 was the anticipated number. What does that tell us? Well, first of all, it tells us who the heck's counting those jobs because it's very confusing to me. Because every day I see a new headline of people laying people off. Yeah, so I don't know who's doing that. But, the place, yeah. but regardless, all right. Irrespective of our maybe our conspiracy theories there, which we'll just leave aside, it was hot, mm. very very hot. Wage inflation was up. Well, that's not good if you're looking for interest rates to come down, if you're looking for inflation to come down. Well, what is that doing? Interest rates, they they went up today on that idea that maybe things aren't cooling. Right. Like we've been thinking. That's been our thesis. Maybe things aren't cooling enough. Maybe the Fed has more work to do. It's yet to be determined. Mm. I, I, I don't know. You know, we live in Kentucky. Big Z, <laughs> he came out of retirement, right? He came into the game. He buried three threes behind the back pass. If you're from Kentucky, you know what I'm talking about. Holy cow. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. Hasn't done much Not since. Not as much since. Yeah, <laughs> he right. should have declared. Right. But I don't know. I'm this, this print that we got on jobs is almost. It's one economic point, right? But it's almost too good to be true. Yeah. I don't know if it is. UPS just announced another set of layoffs. I mean, so it's hard for me to believe. Now, markets sold off on the news except for the big tech that's been bolstered again by these big tech earnings. Now it's all come back again. Uh, so, you know, it continues to be positive. What a busy week. I know it's been long. We normally don't do this, but it's been a fascinating, fascinating week. Markets will end very positive today uh, for the week, which is great. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, guys, we wanted to give you that update because a lot is happening. We'll be back with you again next week. Thanks.